Hey, it's Tom, and today I would like to explain you why I believe it's still worth to learn iOS development, and why I believe iOS development will be still a good job for a couple next years. Let's start with new opportunities and new markets. Apple recently announced that they will be moving their whole Mac line into ARM-based chips. That means all their devices will use the same chip architecture. Macs, iPads, iPhones, and even Apple TV. That means porting apps between iOS and iPadOS and Mac would be much easier right now. What's more, Apple is also unifying UI, if you didn't notice that yet. So they are trying to uh, deliver very similar feeling between all platforms, macOS, iPadOS and iOS. Last year they also announced Swift UI, a new tool that allows us to write apps and design apps much easier and in much more responsible way. Thanks to that, once again, writing one app that will be able to be delivered on all platforms it is much easier. What that means for developers? So, till now, macOS App Store was not very popular. Most of developers focused on writing apps for iOS or iPadOS. And right now, they will have a big and easy opportunity to port those apps and deliver for Mac users. So there, there will be a lot of work that's uh, unfortunately needed to port those apps from iOS and iPadOS to macOS because uh, the architecture is the same, but still it's a different screen size, uh, di different uh, tools are used to interact, like we use uh, touchpad or mouse instead of uh, our finger, so some tweaks will be needed. And there are a lot of companies that have some apps uh, already available on iPadOS or iOS, and with uh, not a big amount of work, they will want to move those apps and deliver them also on macOS because it, it's a new market that, uh, that's not fulfilled yet and uh, they have a chance to access users uh, which are only using uh, MacBooks and are not available on uh, iOS and iPadOS. So thanks to that, I predict there will be a lot of work uh, with porting existing apps to Mac OS or writing some apps from scratch because it will become much easier right now. And uh, even if you will start with Mac OS app, then it will be also much easier to port that to iPad OS or even iOS. Another arguments are jobs and salaries. Starting with jobs. So if you will open LinkedIn, AngelList or Hacker News Jobs and filter job offers with iOS keyword, you will definitely notice that there are tons of jobs for native iOS developers. And you can even check the past uh, months uh, in Hacker News Jobs and you will see that this amount is not growing and it's not decreasing. Many companies are still needing native iOS developers and that's a fact. So there's not a big problem with finding a job as a native iOS developer if you know something, if you are not absolutely newbie. The second argument are salaries. So if you will open, for example, a recent report from Hired or from Stack Overflow, you will definitely notice that native mobile developer is still one of those top best paid jobs, both in US and around the world. The second uh, important thing to, to notice that is that there is a correlation between languages and salaries. So uh, very important thing to, to see is that Objective-C is one of those top best paid languages around the world because not so many people know Objective-C. Uh, developers who started like two, three or even four years ago uh, may have started with only Swift and they don't know Objective-C and there are still tons of libraries and apps that are still written in Objective-C that have to be maintained and will be maintained for still a couple next years, I, I believe. Of course, Swift is also very well paid and the good thing about Swift is that you are not only sticked to uh, Apple ecosystem because both Google is uh, investing in Swift support for, for example, TensorFlow and there are also 
uh, some works on the backend. So recently, AWS uh, started sub supporting Swift uh, in their Lambda pro product. Uh, you can see that. Uh, I will put a link down below in the des description. And there are also some uh, backend frameworks like Kitura, which uh, are also using Swift to, to uh, enable writing uh, backend um, servers. Okay, so there are also many uh, arguments against native app development. First of them is that people don't install new apps anymore. Okay, I can agree that um, even I'm not installing uh, so many apps, it's probably one app per month, but still, every iPhone user has like tens of apps already installed uh, on, on iPhone. And please keep in mind that every single year, Apple is adding something to the ecosystem. Uh, app clips, widgets, many, many changes every single year. So those apps that are uh, widely used have to be maintained. And uh, the bigger is the app, the bigger has to be the team. So please keep in mind that um, even if uh, you are not installing new games or new simple apps, still there are tons of jobs that uh, are available because you have to maintain or write new features to existing apps that are widely popular. Another important thing to keep in mind is that if you have any smart device in your home, uh, you probably have an app for that. And with the rise of popularity of smart home devices, uh, there will be more and more those apps. Even if they are in one ecosystem, the, still, there will be a development job involved in that. So there will be a lot of job offers uh, in those companies that are investing in that. Another important argument is that multi-platform solutions are good enough. Mm, it de depends. So solutions like React Native or Flutter are, of course, very good if you want to write some simple app that is just uh, consuming API and presenting some data to user, or even uh, enabling some uh, simple uh, operations with, with sending some, some data from, from the app. But still, there are many apps that have to use uh, more sophisticated um, so solutions. So if you want to provide the best feeling to user, there are many platform sp specific things that you can use. And those platforms like uh, Flutter or React Native doesn't support most of them. Or uh, if you want to use them on iOS, you just have to write them from scratch only for iOS platform. So, if you want to write uh, features only for one platform, then it's not multi-platform anymore, right? Because you, you still have to write a special code for one platform. And many companies that want to provide the best feeling are deciding to write native apps because the feeling is just the best possible. And uh, thanks to native development, you are able to uh, use all most up-to-date features provided by Apple in this case. So that's, defin that's definitely not a sol solution for everyone. So to, to sum up, multi-platform solutions are okay and they are being used by, by some companies. They will be used by some companies, but you cannot use them for very sophisticated apps or for those apps that demand the best possible feeling. Last but not least, Apple is not going anywhere soon. Please keep in mind that they are taking 30% of each sold app and of each in-app purchase. So it's their business to enable you to write high quality apps easily. And it's their business to find buyers for those apps. It's their business to promote your apps and to find people who are willing to pay for high quality software that they are able to use every day on their iPhones, iPads, and right now on, on their MacBooks or Max. Okay, uh, I hope I was able to share my point of view. And uh, this is why I believe iOS development is still worth learning right now. And that native iOS development will be a secure job for a couple next years. Okay, that's it. I shared my point of view. I hope that right now you understand why I believe it's still worth to learn iOS development and why I believe that 
native iOS development will be still a, a good job for a couple next years. Thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. If you have uh, any questions or uh, you have any thoughts that are different than mine, feel free to share them in the comments section. Thank you for your time. See you next time. Bye.